Greetings again, this is Dr. Bill White with the American Orthodontic Society and I'm going to talk to you a little bit as good as I could talk about C-clasp in using retention with retainers with C-clasp on them. And you have to run over the occlusion surface with it and people bite on those. And I never use any kind of clasp in the orthodontics. I'll show you how I keep the appliances in there. And so let's let's get going and I'm gonna go in here and show you. Now when I make a retainer, we put an 036 wire. That's a 036 wire in the back and you come around the last tooth you come up on the side and you sticky wick wax it in there. And uh, then we take a 028 wire and go around the outside. I'll show you the pictures of that later. Get down here. There. So this is, uh, and we use a triad acrylic to make these out of. Now this is one we just put, if we want to, cover up the wire you can just put acrylic over the wire if you want to but I don't I don't use that hardly ever and you make this and put it in a deal like that and you put uh, but before you go in there we make the, the wire on the inside come up and come around these teeth around your last molar <coughs> back here and then we put this as an 028 wire and we bond with 036 and 028 together. And you have a little expansion loop in here or a contracting loop where you can make this smaller or you can make it bigger. And you can adjust the uh, pull that you have on the anterior teeth. Now we do not use any kind of clasp at all and they're going in here. But what we do, if we have trouble with it sliding out, we'll put a little bit of composite up here at just an angle, and they'll snap over that, and you can't hardly take them out. You have to pull the wire out a little bit, and they'll slip over. And we do that on both sides of the mouth. And that keeps the retainer in there good. If you've got a wire running across the top, you would chew on that unless you cut a groove in here. And we don't like to do that. And it just works better without any clasp at all in there. That lets your teeth come completely together. They don't have any interference. I've seen people come in a retainer and while they're wearing it, their tooth hits this wire and it moves during the night. You take it out, the tooth moves back. The tooth goes back and forth, and I, this messes up. People get tired of wearing them like that. So you just fix it where there's no interference for the teeth coming together again. Let's show you a little further around now. We make the retainer with three different wires. One coming from this side, put around, and then we sticky wax it and now when we come out with the heavy wire it has to work around the back of that tooth and, and sticky wax it in place and this is a solder joint you put it either there you can put it up closer to the front if you want to and you can put this wherever you want and then we put those little wedges, put them, and then, so if you, let me kind of illustrate that a little bit better. Uh, let me get a thing like you. You've got a tooth on your the tail of the side of the retainer back here. So this is a motor, and this wire's running all beside it right here, and we just put slide about a, 
Rally. Of a good compart about all the tooth. So I will have to try that again. Here. The wire would be here. And this potato is a the composite that you would be a good part of the material to fix that here. And it, you can slide the retainer over it, or you, if you want to keep it off, come in from the top with this. This thing's not riding. Those styluses are not very good. You know, you put that on top, and you have this a wedge, and you slide that over that wedge, and that snaps in that position. And you can rip, ring your arch bar out, and slip it off over one side, bring it down, but you can't take them out. And it's much better than having a wire going all the way across in between the teeth. Invariably, they're going to chew on that wire. And so that's what I try to keep that out of the way. And the teeth go down there until the, they work their way in. They wire themselves, wear themselves in. Now, here we'll just go ahead with this. Now, we put a solder joint. I'd never have these break. I used to solder it out here, but now we've, for the last several years, we make the solder joint. Now, let me tell you something. If you make this out of this triad acrylic, and we just take, we put a little bit of that triad, now you tape, paint your model with a little separating material, put some of this Try it down in the center where you're going to have this wire. And you want to make this long so you don't want to break this thing off up here. So you got this heavy wire going on out. And we lay this wire in there, press it down in it, and now you're going to take a sheet of this triad acrylic, like that, cover over the top of it adapt it down around the teeth and then come in and trim it off but right there what you won't need. You take a board parker, trim it, and now you've got the uh, shell of the acrylic in here and that's, you make this after, well, what, well, let me go back here and say, when you get ready to finish a case, if it's a child and a, your parents are there, let them come in there and look at it. If this is what we're going to end up with, when you're taking brackets off, there's just a fan space right in here that you close. You don't have any problem with that. So we take the archway out, and if the people say, this is what we want, and I say, what you see here now is what you're going to get. It, we couldn't do that when we were using bands and you had to close all that space. And so they say, that's what we want. So, okay, you say, okay, we'll take the archway out now and we'll take an impression of that and we put the archway back in and we build a retainer with it there. Then we have the retainer built. We get them in, we take the archway out and then we trim all the uh, the models, the brackets off that are in the casting. Just trim them off so the way they like the surface of the tooth. And now I insert the uh, the appliance in there, and they keep that. We this was an old time of heater. You put it in there and you heat that up, and it would seal that up. We put a bit, give them a little box for that apply with your retainer in there. Now, uh, <coughs> the secret of 
This is keep this model that you made the teeth, made the retainer at all. Don't throw it away. Keep that. Now I think now you have people go out and they'll leave this retainer out for a, a week or their grandmothers or somewhere or another or a week or two and they put it in their mouth and the thing doesn't fit. And they say, well, this retainer is warped. Or it's a, you, they come in saying, well, the retainer doesn't fit. You just go get your box there. You've got, say, this is the model that we made the retainer on. Do you have your old retainer that doesn't fit? And it's slipping on there and it fits like a glove. I say, this retainer has not moved one bit. And so your teeth have shifted. Now we'll have to put it back in and you'll have to force wear it and it will bring the teeth back almost exactly to where it was to start with. The retainer brings the teeth back. And so just remember, do not throw this model away. Keep it and keep a record for years after. And if somebody comes in three or four years later and say, my retainer, I broke it. You can, if you have to, you can't, you can fix it and put it back on that model, make sure it's the same thing. You can use that model so much to remake it, or you can patch that one up and slip it back over the model and cut it down at an angle and fill it in with acrylic, and you can fix the retainer on the model. So keep the model the retainer is made on and hold on to it. If they have nothing on the retainer to hold it up, we'll put a little composite underneath on the teeth, and you put it in like but there's a composite possibly stuck on the tooth down under it. You'd snap it up over it, and that retainer wire will stay right there. In fact, you can position the retainer wire you want. If you put one down here and then put one at the top, that wire will stay in that position. You can take it off, and you don't have anything for them to chew on. Then we give them the box, we give them the, uh, the name of our, someone will call us if they find it. And this is just a illustration of the retainers. And the retainer can be made to fit really close. And sometimes we used to make the front of them, sometimes if their tooth moved a little, and it would push it back to where it was when they started. My voice is just getting so bad. And that's put this acrylic on it, but we didn't like them with that. But I never used clasp. We call them C clasp or C clasp, however you look it up. But until you do not need them, and you make a wraparound retainer for the wire it goes all the way around, never crosses the occlusal surface of the teeth. And that lets the teeth erupt into each other and wear in just like a, a the valves in a car or something, where they wear in, where they fit together really tight. And that's where we add a bite plate to the retainer. A lot of times if you correct one where you got a deep bite and you stop it here, you put a little pad up here and you bite into it, it leaves the tracks with the teeth in it and it won't deepen past that as long as they've got their retainer. So I hope you get some idea from this. I have nothing against people that use retainers with, with class, but the wire runs over it, and nearly every one of them is biting on the wire a certain way when they put the retainer in, and they get their teeth move. While you're wearing it, you take them out, they move back. So you do not need to do that. 
to just put little wedges of acrylic underneath the wire and it'll snap up and stay. But most of it we don't have to put anything. Just the vacuum in the mouth will hold the retainer in place. So thank you again and I want to say goodbye. We hope to see you and I hope you'll subscribe to our channels. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.